A lot of people shy away from pouring on a large canvas. Not me. I'm going to show you my tricks on getting a nice level surface underneath a piece of canvas. And I'll take you through all my steps of how I prep and get ready to pour. Stay tuned. Welcome to Moon Cusser Art. This is Janet and I'm out in the backyard and prepping a 24 by 36 canvas with a primer coat of spray paint. Works really well and it helps keep everything tight. I spray painted the canvas and it's all dry and it's got a nice tight sound to the canvas. I know a lot of people um, prefer working on panels. I like panels too, but I also like using canvas from time to time. And I had a viewer ask me, what do I do in order to work on canvas? So um, rather than using gesso to seal the canvas, I use spray paint and that's nice lightweight. Um, and it doesn't do anything as far as making the canvas sag, so that's good. And I'm going to show you what I do to keep my canvas from sagging in the middle due to the weight of the resin itself when I'm pouring on the canvas. So, low ceiling. I have a piece of Luan. Now Luan, in case you don't know, it's a very thin, it's maybe a quarter of an inch thick, and it's very lightweight. It's a type of plywood, and you can get it at Home Depot, Lowe's, any place you can get lumber, they're going to carry Luan. So I have panels like this that I have cut that I can fit inside of the canvas. Now you can see here that it's cut a little bit longer. So the reason for that is so that I can support. Now this canvas is an easy one to do because it only has this bridge on the rack that the canvas is stapled and attached to. So this is a artist's loft gallery canvas. It's uh, 24 by 36. And my Luan is labeled 24 by 36. I keep these clean, they're dust free. I keep them in a closet and I'll be honest with you, there is just a little bit of warping due to uh, some moisture. So, but it's not bad at all. It's, it's really pretty flat and straight. So I'm okay with that. And what I do is I take my Luan and I go under the bridge. So obviously it's cut so that I can get it in between these rails. I slide it underneath there and I keep going until I'm past that and it actually slides right underneath that rack and then I drop it. Now this side it's flush and this side it's underneath the rail. So now I'm just going to take my entire canvas and I'm just going to shake it a little bit to get it to drop. So now it's underneath this rail and it's underneath this rail. All right. Now I have a gap. When I'm laying it flat on the tabletop, that's where it's level. So it's to keep the sag in the middle. That's where... If you don't do something like this on a large canvas, it's going to pool down into the middle. And honestly, I've had that happen and I like the effects. So, but other times I don't want to because it takes up more resin 
and it also leaves my edges exposed a little bit. So what I do is I have paint sticks, again, from my friends at Home Depot, and I put them underneath this center rail. Now, if I only put, I've got four counted out there. If I put four in there, there's still a gap. It's, it's quite loose. It's not really tight. So I'd rather have it be slightly tight. So I got five sticks. And you can see when I push that in, it's snug now. Now, I also want to be able to, because I don't know what I'm going to do at this point, but what I want to do is be ready to pick this canvas up and tilt if I want that effect. So I'm just going to take some tape and I'm going to bundle these sticks together so that they stay together because there's nothing worse. I've had it happen than picking up your canvas and starting to tilt and have these fall out. And now my canvas isn't going to be snug and potentially there's pooling. So this is a precaution to do that. Get that in there. Now it's snug and it's not, it's not going to come out because even if I do tilting, it's snug enough that it's not going to fall out. So watch. <laughs> it's not moving. I don't want to put anything. I could put a wedge, you know, I could put a wedge in there, but I don't want to, because if I start wedging it out too much, what's going to happen is now on this side, I'm going to start seeing a push against the canvas. And I don't want that. If I, if I push too much, I'll see if I can get it to show up. See that? If I push too much, I'll see that edge of my Luan. And I don't want that. I want it to stay level. So I'm not going to push that out. And the other thing that I do when I'm prepping my canvases is I like to tape off the edge. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my, this is my 3M Painters Edge Lock Tape. And I'm going to run that around my edges. And uh, you guys have probably seen me do that before, but that helps me keep it nice and clean. And at the end of the project, I can remove that tape and I might have a little bit of sanding to do for drips, but it really cuts down big time on the amount of drips. So I'm going to get that started. I start in the corner and I work across one side of the canvas and then I use a edge of a um, Sharpie marker and I burnish the tape down. Burnishing is just warming it up and it gives good adhesion. Start from the center and work out. All the tape is on. I used my marker, made that all stick down good. It's just a slight roll on that canvas. So the tape is back from that. And these are my feet that I like to use to support my canvas off the tabletop. It's just a yogurt cup with a donut of tape on top. This is going to stick nicely. I want to do it on the rail. I don't want anything pushing on that. I'm just going to pop these onto my corners. Right, and I try to keep it back a little bit back so that when I'm cleaning my drip edge, it's not going to be in my way. All four corners get a foot. 
All right. And there we go. Okay. And that's it for prep. Turn it back over. My cups are staying on. My panel's staying put. I'm up off the surface of the board. My tabletop is covered with a heavy gauge plastic. Uh, yeah, it's like a um, construction plastic. I got it off of a roll, so I cut it to fit my tabletop. And I'm set to start pouring, so let's get going. So this is what I did for the first layer. It's 40 ounces of resin poured out. Then I moved on to my second layer doing ribbons and a total of 25 ounces of resin. Okay, it's all cured and I'm leaving this to have different surfaces. I don't want it to be a glass surface. It's shiny, it's resin, but I like the look of the different levels from the ribbons getting poured on top. So that's what I was going for. I'm going to show you how I'm going to finish this off. So those are my feet. And I'm going to bring you guys closer. I'm just going to pull those off because I have my taped edge. And I'm going to remove that. So let me get you in close while I do that. And uh, then we'll take that panel because you can see I still have my Luan plywood supporting the back of that canvas. I learned the hard way. One time I poured one layer of resin and let it cure. And I thought I was in good shape um, because it was smooth and hard and level. And I took my panel out of the back and poured another layer well because the thermal reaction from the resin warmed up that first layer don't you know <laughs> that the canvas bellied into the middle so if you're looking to pour on a large canvas especially on a large canvas remember this is a 24 by 36 canvas keep that luon in there because if you're going to do one layer and then a second layer or third layer, whatever you're going to do, it's going to belly if you don't have it supported. So let me bring you in close and we'll take off that tape. I'm using my Wagner heat gun and I'm warming up the tape edge. It's important to remember to do this within 24 hours of pouring. You're going to just warm up that resin. It's still slightly soft and it helps to pull it off nice and clean. Tape is off, a little bit of drips here and there, and I'm gonna work on those by using a razor knife to get those off. But otherwise, it's a nice clean edge. And let's get my brace out from behind. And now we're gonna get that piece of Luan out of there. So just like I did before, I'm going to let it slide down and wedge in behind here. Now I can get myself in to that. And that's out. You guys can't see, but there's still a little flex because, you know, it's resin. It's not glass, but that's great. It's nice and flat. There's no bowing to the piece. And I've got good coverage over my edges. And it's done. So give that a try. And I hope it works out good for you. And I'll see you next time. Click on one of these videos and you can get started with understanding more about resin art.
I give in-depth tutorials that I believe you'll find very helpful. And don't forget to subscribe. Your, by your subscribing helps me keep making more videos just like this.